Greetings to all. Welcome back to the course on MATLAB Simulink. So this is module 3 and in module 3 we will be learning about the modeling and the controller design of DC-DC converters. So the DC-DC converter I have taken here for the example is buck converter. So as we know uh, there are different types of converters. So in non-isolated converters there are three converters that is a buck converter which steps down the voltage and there is a boost converter which steps up the voltage and there are buck boost converter also. So we will be focusing on the how we can model a buck converter and this we will be doing in two parts. In the first part we will be learning about the theory of the behind the buck converter and what are the control schemes which can be employed for controlling the buck converter output voltage. So what is a buck converter? A buck converter or a step down converter is a DC to DC converter that means it takes DC as an input and it gives DC as an output that decreases the voltage while increasing the current from its input to its output load. That means the circuit shown here shows a VS, a VS means source and V out is the output. So this voltage is the output and the circuit between these two is known as the buck converter. This is the buck converter which I am showing by the dotted. So this is the buck converter. The resistance is the output V out and the resistance is known as R and input is V source. So what is the relation between input and output voltage? It is V out that is the output voltage is equal to D into V source. D is the duty cycle. D is known as a duty cycle. What is duty cycle? Duty cycle is the ratio between on time and the total time of the switching which switch we are talking about s1 so this is a switch which can be a mosfet which can be a transistor which can be a igbt depending on the power rating or in the uh, frequency of the operating frequency of the buck converter so for example we take a mosfet so if switch is a mosfet it has to on and off its function is to on and off the supply so the on period suppose the switch is on for the 2 millisecond and total time is 2 millisecond plus 3 millisecond it is off. So the duty cycle here becomes 0.4 okay. So the output voltage will depend on the this duty cycle. So this is the case of a buck converter. Now if I say buck converter so the buck converter I am writing buck converter here. So V output depends on D into V input. Similarly, for the boost converter, the V output depends on the V input upon 1 minus D. So this will increase the output of the voltage. Similarly, there is a buck and boost converter whose output is given by D upon 1 minus D into V input. So these are the three expressions we can use for the buck boost and individually buck and the boost converter. So we will not be going in depth in boost or the buck converter but we will be focusing only on the buck converter because if you can learn how to design a buck converter you can do further analysis. So what are the mode of operations? So there are two only two modes of operation. So as I have told you this is a switch this switch is known as S and a simplified diagram I can show you in here. So we will be deleting this and we can so here we can show you a simplified diagram. So here is a switch. This is a switch and here is a diode which is known as a prevailing diode and here we Put an inductor and on the output we put a capacitor to reduce the ripple in the output voltage and then there is a resistance or the load so this can be known as a load so this is load this is capacitor to reduce the ripple so c not output this is a capacitor and this is the inductor and this is a switch s and here is the input and this is the output the output V not. So in the mode 1, in the mode 1 when the S is on. So what happens when the switch is on? 
when the switch is on the switch is on like this and the supply will be showing it with the another color so the current will go like this and to the load and it will be returning to this so during mode 1 the diode will not be working so the current will be going like this i know current will be going like this so this is mode 1 in second mode which is the mode 2 mode 2 the switch will be off so what happens when the switch is off when the switch is off then what happen will be showing you so suppose the switch is on, off then the in the current will be flowing through the diode and it is it will be free wheeling because as we know that the current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously so it will flow through the diode and this is a free wheeling diode so in the mode 2 the diode will be working so here i can write in mode 1 the current will be flowing through the switch and in second case the current will be flowing through the diode okay so now we can go to the this operation so here i have shown the similar thing when the switch is on you can see that the current il is flowing through the inductor switch is somewhere here and diode is somewhere here which is for the sake of simplicity has been eliminated and this is the circuit for the mode 1 for mode 2 here the diode is here and the switch is here but for the sake of simplicity we have done this so the current will be going like this and here the current will be going like this here and here both okay so these are the two modes so depending on the converter the modes will change but for the sake of simplicity we will be uh, sticking to the buck converter and this is the two mode converter so now the question arises how to control switch now we know that depending on the switch we can control the duty cycle depending on the switch we can control the output voltage so if we control the duty cycle we can control the output voltage so now the main question comes how to control the duty cycle so to control the duty cycle or the switching of the switch what I, I can do I can use these control systems what are these control systems the first control system is voltage mode control so we develop we take input of the output voltage output voltage is our desired voltage and according to that voltage we generate an error and we give a duty cycle from the controller controller can be the pi controller second is the current mode control and similarly sliding mode control pid control non-linear control and there is polynomial control so for this video we will be comparing these two control methods which are the most popular methods voltage control and voltage mode control and the current mode control okay so first we will be learning about the voltage mode control so what is voltage mode control so the voltage mode control means that what we are doing the underlying concept behind voltage mode control is that we are sensing the output voltage okay we will be sensing the output voltage and we will be giving a reference voltage what is reference voltage is the voltage you desire to be as the output so suppose here the voltage of the suppose the converter is running free and here the input is 48 volt and output is coming 30 volt but now you want the voltage to be 33 volt so the reference will become the 33 volt and the input will become the sense input the measured input will become 30 volt so there will be an error generated of 3 volt so this error is given to the pi controller what is pi controller pi controller is a simple proportional integral controller so you can learn about this in detail but what is the work of pi controller depending on the input which is coming as an error so this is an error it generates some value so it can generate uh, 5 10 whatever value it is generating and now we are giving a sawtooth waveform this kind of waveform sawtooth waveform so here sawtooth waveform will be from 0 to 1 suppose and the pi controller output is also limited between 0 to 1 okay so it will be giving some voltage it will pi will be giving some output say it is giving 0.43 as an output 
corresponding to the error okay so this 0 to 1 waveform is continuously coming and here is a comparator comparator so what the comparator will do will be explaining in next slide in detail so there is a waveform like this sawtooth waveform okay and the pi output is coming like this okay so the pi output will be coming here so this both waveform as you can see this both waveform the sawtooth and the output of the pi is given to the comparator so this both combined is given to the comparator and comparator what it will do it will generate a bits bits are the either the zero or the one so whenever whenever the output voltage of the pi is greater than the voltage of sawtooth it will generate one and whenever the v of pi is less than v saw it will generate zero so here we can put like this so during this period it will generate one it will generate one then zero then again one then zero then here again one and zero similarly zero and one. so this is one this is zero one zero one zero and this waveform coming out of the comparator this is a comparator out so this waveform coming out of the comparator is given to the switch and what switch will do whenever the input to the output input to the switch is 1 it will be on and whenever the input to the switch is 0 it will be off so here if we corresponding to this 1 0 if we put switch is on here off here on here off on off on and so on okay so again we will be going to the diagram so what let us summarize what we are doing the load voltage is measured and the reference voltage is given depending on these two we will generate an error we will be subtracting these two and the error is generated that error is given to the pi which gives an output corresponding to the error if the error is zero then it will keep the output same but if the error comes it will change try to change the switching and it will change the switching till the time this voltage 33 becomes 30 30 voltage becomes 33 okay and this comparator is here to generate voltage uh, to generate a binary output as 0 and 1 where 1 means on and the 0 means off so again here this i have summarized in this four blocks the output voltage is sensed an error between reference voltage and measured voltage is given to the controller controller here is means pi okay the controller gives duty cycle as output okay and then the controller this duty cycle as the output and that duty cycle is compared with sawtooth carrier to generate switching pulses these switching pulses are given to the switch okay so now the question arises how to configure pi so the pi consists of two things okay so the pi consists of two things what are the two things one is a proportional and one is the integrator so pi is looks like this and here is a integrator this is an integrator and this is a summation this is a pi so here comes the error and these are the gain gain 1 and gain 2 gain 1 can be called as k proportional kp and gain 2 can be known as gain integral then the transfer function of this becomes kp plus this can be integrator is 1 by s ki by s this is the transfer function of this so what a pi can be done we have to select these two values what is kp what is ki so there are few methods to select one method is uh, which is known as trial and error method so you can put kp equal to 1 and ki equal to 0 for initial and then you can check how the output is being measured 
okay we will be seeing it in the simulation then we can increase one to two and this to one both one one so this is known as trial and error method another method is known as a pole zero cancellation which needs uh, another detailed uh, video but a pole zero cancellation is done by calculating the transfer function of the system and then uh, according to that system's transfer function we put kp and ki values there are other methods also code and iquist plot where we can use them to uh, get the kp and ki values in this video we'll i'll be trying to show two methods basically uh, one is trial and error method which you can all do for the simple circuits but as a circuit become complex you have to go for the pole zero cancellation or the other uh, methods okay so this is how the pole voltage mode control works then the current mode control what current mode control is here we are sensing two things so the two things we are sensing is one is as we were uh, sensing the output voltage from here and one is the input current il current both we are sensing and giving to the pid controller similarly and here is a reference voltage this is a reference voltage and according to this we are generating the d and then the sawtooth waveform pwm and switching the other circuit this circuit is similar to the earlier circuit the only difference here is that we are sensing voltage as well as the current and this method is slightly typical compared to the voltage mode control but it gives us the range of the uh, flexibility or the freedom in control increases so what we are doing here is output voltage and input current are sensed and error between the reference voltage and measured voltage generated and this voltage generates what we call a reference current and that reference current is again compared with the measured current and duty cycle is generated and the rest is similar the duty cycle is compared with the sawtooth and the sawtooth and the duty cycle comparison gives out the binary output 10 where 1 means on and 0 means off okay so this is the current mode control method so what we are going to do in the simulink Uh, we will be making a buck converter and controlling it using voltage control method okay so we will be making a buck converter we will be controlling it using the using the voltage control method which we have seen is a simplified version and current mode control is uh, another method which we can also use but here the number of sensor used is only one we are only sensing the what we call the output voltage but in this case we are measuring two things so we require two sensors so for the simple circuits we will be using only one sensor so that our control circuit is minimized and also pi used is also only one pi is used there we can we have to use two pi that is a two uh, that is a the loop the control loop is only one here and there it is two okay so will be going to the simulink model i will be showing you first what uh, how i have made this the simulink model and then we'll be going to the another uh, section of the video